Hey guys, it's me, Shlee. Welcome back for another grocery challenge. As you might have guessed by the quarter in my hand, we are going to be going to Aldi today. This challenge will be a little bit different. It's not going to be a $20 or a $35 challenge like I usually do here on my channel. Instead, I'm going to try and do a $50 challenge that is going to feed two people for an entire week. So I'll have a little bit more room in the budget and I think that'll help me make some more intricate complicated dishes. With this challenge, I'm also going to try and do a little spin on it because St. Patrick's Day is coming up soon, so I'm going to try and do some Irish dishes in this one, as well as throw in some fun things that Aldi just happens to have. As we know, they have really good finds most times, so I'm hoping this time when I'm in here, they'll be just as good as they usually are. What was that sentence? <laughs> Let's go inside. <laughs> Nice and Select another option or finish it. Okay guys, I am out of Aldi. That was an amazing run if I do say so myself. They had a ton of interesting stuff aside from what I already planned to get, so I was able to get so many goodies. Now let's head home, I'll show you a haul, and then we'll start cooking. Here we are back home. Here's an overview of everything that I bought today. I think for $50, this is a pretty amazing spread. It looks really good. I think the food is gonna taste really good. Let me take you around and show you everything I got piece by piece. The star of this show here is this corned beef brisket that I got. I spent $7.39 on this and I was really happy about this because I knew this is gonna be the biggest part of my budget. This is gonna take out the most money. I thought this was a really good price, especially for this size. And of course it's Irish, so we're starting off our theme really well here. I also have some eggs here, just a dozen eggs, half a gallon of whole milk, some strawberries. In the back there, I've got some white cheddar cheese puffs, some salt and vinegar chips, as well as a five pound bag of potatoes, some Colby Jack cheese, ham, breakfast sausage, some Irish style bangers. So these are just sausages for anyone who doesn't know or isn't familiar with that term. I have a pound of ground beef, some green peas, green beans, a head of cabbage back here, some beef broth, a loaf of bread, baby carrots, I'm not sure if I mentioned these yet, a jar of raspberry jam or raspberry fruit spread. And last but not least, I got these two pieces of turtle cheesecake to have as a dessert throughout the week. And that is everything I got. Let me grab my receipt and I'll show that to you as well. Here is my receipt. So in total, before tax, I spent $50.33, so I was almost right on the money, literally, for my budget. With tax, it was $51.34, but if you don't live in a state with sales tax on food, then you won't have to worry about that part. Like I said before, I think for $50.33, I got a pretty good spread here. So now I will go through really quickly, talk about some pantry staples. I didn't forget this time. And then we will start cooking all this and making some delicious meals. All right, let's talk about our pantry staples, get this out of the way, and then we'll move on to some more interesting topics. You will need a few things from your pantry, but they are all basic items, namely butter, all-purpose flour, salt and pepper, and some leavening. That's just gonna be baking soda and baking powder. If you don't already have these, they can be acquired pretty cheaply at any grocery store. Moving on from that, let's talk about our breakfast. There are a couple of options for breakfast. I'll talk about that later. The first thing we're going to do to get our breakfast started is make some scones. Now I have to put a caveat in here because I was not aware until after this challenge that there was a difference between American scones and European scones. So much to my chagrin, I realized I had actually made American scones. So this part of the meal plan is not Irish at all, but it's okay because I learned something and I got to make something new. Of course, I will be linking the recipes and any kind of documents y'all will need for this meal plan down below. So you can check down there for recipes like this one for the scones. Although I would personally not recommend this scone recipe 
I was not super happy with how these turned out. I thought the measurements were off, as you'll see here in a little bit. And of course, if you're really going to do this challenge and try to make it Irish themed, you should be making European style scones. So I will also link another recipe down below for European scones that you can make with very similar ingredients to the ones I'm showing you here for this challenge. So far, all I've done is put my eggs and milk together and whisk that up. Now I'm adding some leavening and salt to my flour here. Gonna give that a really good mix. Next, I am dotting butter throughout the flour mixture. You could cut this in with a pastry cutter if you had one, or you can use the good old phalanges. They work really well. As you can see, I'm just putting my hands in the mixture and crumbling it up, trying to get the butter bits broken up and then covered in flour. And once that was all mixed up, it looked a little something like this. So you can see it's crumbly looking. There's little bits of butter that are covered in flour and that's exactly what you want or supposedly, that's what the recipe said. Then I'm going to slowly add in my wet ingredients. The recipe said to add until the mixture was just moistened, so not to over moisten the batter or the dough. I really felt like you could have used at least another half a cup of milk in this. And you can see as I'm adding it here, it's still quite dry and crumbly. It's not really coming together as I thought a dough should. But of course, with my minimal baking knowledge, I was just doing my best to follow the recipe here. Once I got that as mixed together as I could, I turned it out onto my floured countertop in preparation to knead it. The recipe said you would only have to knead this 10 times for it to come together. That was not a possibility for what I created. As you can see, this is extremely dry. It definitely needed more moisture and I did go back and add a little bit more milk to this just to try and save it. But I really thought it needed even more milk than that. I just didn't want to tamper with the recipe too much. I was trying to stay as authentic as possible to the recipe. Once I managed to get this into a sort of ball dough shape, I then took my sister's pastry cutter, which she let me borrow. Thank you, Amber. I cut it into two halves and then each half into six wedges. So we're going to have 12 scones out of this recipe. And you may be wondering, there's only 12 scones. How is each person going to have one every day? You're actually not. So on the last day, if you follow my meal plan, you should have an extra potato and that will be made into a potato hash to be the main part of your breakfast. But again, you'll see that in the meal plan, which is linked down below. And there they are on a tray ready to go into the oven for their journey. While the scones were cooking, I went ahead and started frying some sausage. So these sausages I bought were actually maple sausages. I did not realize that when I picked them up. I thought they were just original, but that was a pleasant surprise. I'm just cooking these in this pan until they are nicely browned on all sides. And I did roll them around a lot to make sure they evenly browned on all sides. But this is pretty simple. Just cook until done pretty much. After the sausages, I threw some butter into my other cast iron skillet. I decided that I wanted a fried egg with my breakfast this day. Like with the sausages, this is a pretty simple maneuver. Just melt that butter, crack that egg, and you're almost done pretty much. I did stab my egg yolk very forcefully with a fork because I don't like runny egg yolks, so I wanted to make sure it cooked all the way through. And then I went in to season with some salt and pepper. Very basic, but extremely delicious. Then you gotta give it the old flip about halfway through and try not to fold it over like I did. And I do like to flip my eggs twice because I like them to be really nice and crispy and brown. So that's why I flipped it over again there. And then after that, it was time to serve. So here are our plates. There's mine with the egg and then my two sausages and my sister's sausage as well. And here's my plate with my scone on it. Amber's looked the same, just she did not have an egg on hers. And I'm topping that scone with the fruit spread that I bought at Aldi. You can see I was not sure how to apply this fruit mixture to the scone, so it was a sort of learn as I go method. If it was a biscuit, of course I would cut it in half and spread the jelly on the inside, but it's not a biscuit, so I didn't treat it as such. You can see here the scones did bake up nicely. They were really buttery and flavorful in that aspect, and they had a lot of layers, which was fun, but they were a little crispier and drier than I would have preferred. Overall though, it was fun to try something new, and that fruit spread was really delicious. I would definitely buy that again in a heartbeat. And you can't go wrong with a fried egg and some maple sausage. So all in all, this was a very good breakfast, very filling, and a great way to start my day. Plus, it takes hardly any time to cook, which is always nice. I know a lot of us are busy in the morning and we don't have a lot of time to spend cooking. All right, from here, let's move on to lunch. Lunch is really simple. It's going to be sandwiches most days and then leftovers on a few other days. I'm starting off with two pieces of bread from our loaf of bread we bought at Aldi. And I am buttering that with some butter that was far too stiff for what I was putting it through. I should have melted it a little bit, but I'm spreading that butter pretty thickly on these slices of bread because we're going to be toasting them or frying them in a pan, so butter is not optional here. 
I'm then adding one slice of my cheese and several slices of my deli ham. So just depending on your package of ham, whatever a serving size is, portion that out. You will need five servings for each person for the week, so 10 servings. So portion that out accordingly and then stack your sandwich. Then you're gonna top it with the other slice of bread and then throw it down or lay it gently into a pan that's already hot with some melted butter in it. And you're basically making a grilled cheese just with some ham in there as well. If you have some extra money in the budget, you're welcome to throw in some mayonnaise or some different seasonings to really liven this up and dress it up. But there's nothing wrong with a plain old ham and cheese toasty. I know they're a classic over in Europe and they really should be more popular here in America because they are delicious and simple. And here's our spread for lunch. We've got salt and vinegar chips, strawberries, and then we have a sandwich a piece. Of course, I had to cut it diagonally because it tastes better this way. And there's the shot of the inside with that melty cheese and you can see all the ham that's in there as well. These sandwiches were not skimpy by any means, which is really nice. Of course, I had to go in for a taste test and I had actually never had a ham and cheese toasty like this before. I have had ham and cheese subs, hot ham and cheese subs. and I love those. And these, of course, were similar. So this took maybe 10 minutes to throw together, which is, again, great if you're short on time, if you're busy. And those salt and vinegar chips went so well with that sandwich. They were nice and tangy. They had a lot of seasoning on them and they paired really well with that really savory sandwich we have on the side there. And strawberries, I love. They're one of my favorite fruits. These were from the blessed state of Florida and they were so sweet and delicious. I can't wait to get more of these when summer comes and it's actually strawberry season. All right, it's time for a bonus round. So at the end of this week, I had some corned beef left over, which you'll see me make later. And I decided to see if I could make a homemade Reuben style sandwich with that. So here's how I did it. First off, I started by making some homemade sauerkraut, which was super easy. I took my leftover cabbage and I sliced it up really thin, as you can see here. And I just put that into a pot. Then I topped that with a good amount of apple cider vinegar. I actually went back and added more after this shot. And then I also put some water in. And that's really it. That's all you need, aside from a good pinch of salt, which I did put in off camera. Once you've done this, you just need to put the lid on and let this cook. And this turned out really well. I had never made sauerkraut before. I didn't know it was this easy and I do like sauerkraut. So in the future, I may be making this again, especially if I wanna make more Rubens, which I think I will because these were so good. And once it was done, it looked like this. I did leave it a little bit crispier than store-bought sauerkraut usually is. But I'm sure if I had left this for longer, either cooking or in the fridge, just sitting, it would have gotten a little bit softer because my cabbage did still have a little bit of a bite, a little bit of a crunch to it. There it is, ready to go. I did let that sit in the fridge for one night before I put it on my sandwiches, just so the flavors had more time to marry and it was a little bit stronger when I put it on the sandwich. So here's my leftover corned beef. I just took my leftovers and I sliced them pretty thin, some slices thinner than others. And this is what's gonna be on our sandwiches. So as with the toasties, one side I spread with butter, and then the other side I'm spreading with this sweet and spicy mustard that I just happened to have on hand and I needed to use it up. I thought it would go really well in this sandwich in place of a Russian dressing or a Thousand Island that you usually find on a Reuben. And I was right, this was so good. And then on top of that, I put a slice of Colby cheese. I know this is not the typical cheese used in Reuben's, but it's what I had on hand and I wanted to see if it would work. And then on top of that, I put my sliced corned beef. As you can see, I'm not being shy with the portion because I had plenty left over. The corned beef, chunk that I bought made 10 servings, so I had plenty to use. And then I also put on some cabbage that was fighting me, or sauerkraut I should say, and topped it with the other slice of bread. So then it's ready to go and be toasted. And here we are, same thing as with the toasty, just get that butter in the pan, get it hot, and then alternate sides until the cheese is melted and everything is nicely warmed through. Shouldn't take but a few minutes. So here's a shot of the secondary bonus lunch that I managed to make. There's my sister's plate. She ate her sandwich while I was making mine because she was really hungry. And then there's my sandwich. And those are the cheese puffs that I bought from Aldi as well, the white cheddar ones. Again, I'm slicing the sandwich on the diagonal because I want it to taste as delicious as possible. And here's a view of the cross section for y'all. The corned beef was really tender. It heated up nicely. The cheese melted and everything was just blended together. And I could not tell that was Colby cheese on there, by the way. I thought this was one of the best Rubens I've had. I really impressed myself with this one because as you saw, I just threw this together with things I had on hand, leftovers, things that I needed to use up. And it turned out so well. I could not have been happier with this. And I had plenty of these Aldi white cheddar cheese puffs on hand as well. I love white cheddar things and these are really good. They're nice and light and airy and salty. Perfect to have on the side. 
All right, moving on to dinner. The first thing we're going to be making is bangers and mash, which is an Irish classic, in case you guys didn't know. We're starting off just by boiling some potatoes to make mashed potatoes. This is pretty simple. Water, potatoes, boil, and you're almost done. While the potatoes were boiling, I went ahead and cooked the sausages in a little bit of butter. I did three this day, so we each had one and a half sausages, since the pack I bought came with five, so it's an odd number. And this is pretty simple again. Just cook these until they're nicely browned on all sides. You might have to do as I did and sort of stack these up or layer them in the pan at different angles to make sure that all the sides get browned. Like here, I'm leaning them against the side of the pan. But do whatever it takes because you want these to be nice and brown and delicious. Once your potatoes look like this, where you can easily crush them with a fork, then you know they're done. They're ready to be mashed up. And I season these really simply. Just some butter, mix that in. And then I'm going to go in with some salt and some milk. If you have it on hand, chives would be great or garlic. But if you're on a budget, there's nothing wrong with some good old classic homemade mashed potatoes. Just with salt and butter. And my friend, the potato masher, is going to help me achieve potato perfection here. And this is how they should look when they're done. Nice and fluffy and white and delicious. Here are our two plates. So we each had a huge serving of mashed potatoes. I didn't mention before, but I used two potatoes from my bag that I bought. That was too many. I should have used one and a half because that was so much potato. I definitely could have used less and I ended up saving some of this. Then we each had one and a half sausages and my green beans I made as I always make green beans. I've already showed y'all how to make these in my Christmas dinner video, so I'll link that down below if you're interested in seeing how I made those. Moving on to our second dinner for the week, that's going to be corned beef with cabbage and carrots. So to my crock pot here, I'm adding several baby carrots. And then on top of that, I'm going to put our corned beef brisket fat side up. Then over all this, I'm going to pour some water. This was again another recipe that I later did some more research on and found to be not ideal. It did turn out really good. The meat was really tender and flavorful. But next time I would make this differently. So I'm going to link this recipe as well as another recipe that you might want to try down below. Now I'm covering everything with water. And then all I need to do is put the lid on this and then it cooked on high for five hours. And I will add my cabbage here in just a second. So this was about three hours into the cooking process. Not looking super appetizing, but it was smelling delicious. I decided to add my cabbage here so it would only have to cook for two hours because I didn't want my cabbage to be really mushy. So I cut most of my cabbage head into wedges and I stuffed it into the crock pot. As you can see, it was pretty full here. So I'm trying to get everything down below the water line so it cooks properly. Once everything was submerged in that mixture, I put the lid back on and cooked it for another two hours. And here are my little slices of corned beef. As I mentioned before, this was so tender and so juicy. I had never made corned beef before either. So this was an exciting, momentous occasion for me. And I put a good serving of cabbage and carrots on the side for both of us as well. Like I said, the, the brisket that I bought, it was big enough that there were 10 servings of brisket in there. So I didn't have to be shy at the portions. We could go back with, for seconds. And this was really good. Again, I definitely would recommend getting that brisket from Aldi if you can. You can see there how easily that cuts because it was really tender. And it paired really nicely with the cabbage and the carrots. The cabbage was just right. Again, it had a little bit of crunch to it. And the carrots were nice and soft and just delicious. I couldn't have asked for a more tasty meal. Okay, moving on to dinner number three. This is going to be cottage pie, which is actually one of my favorites. I've been making this for years. So this was no trouble at all for me to make it for an Irish meal plan. I'm starting off by browning up half a pound of the ground beef that I bought from Aldi. I'm just breaking it up as I go here. To that, I'm adding several sliced up baby carrots. You could grate these if you wanted to. That is traditional with cottage pie, but I find this is easier. And this is a very simple homestyle cottage pie. To that, I'm adding half my bag of green peas. I love green peas in cottage pie, so there are a lot of them in this recipe. You can always add less if you choose to. Giving everything a good mix here to make sure that it's all incorporated. And then to this, I'm going to add a few tablespoons of just plain white flour. It's going to combine with any of the fat that was rendered off the beef. It's going to coat everything, and it's going to be the base for the roux that we're going to make in just a minute here by pouring in our beef broth. Keep in mind that the more flour you add, the thicker your broth is going to be. I would actually suggest adding a little more flour than a little less because you can always add more broth to thin it out, but it's harder to thicken the broth once you've already started to add it than it is to add flour at the beginning. I hope that made sense. If not, comment down below and I'll try to confuse you even more. So here I am adding my beef. I'm adding it slowly at first so that I can deglaze the bottom of the pan and judge how thick the gravy is going to be. 
you can see there it's really thick at this point so i'm going to have to add more until it gets to about this point right here it's bubbling super nicely it looks delicious and i'm going to let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes again just so that the vegetables can get soft and the gravy can thicken a little bit more seasoning this one with salt and pepper you could if you have it on hand add some rosemary to this you can even add some cayenne you could spice this up literally in a lot of ways but we're on a budget this week and this is how I usually make it, just with salt and pepper. And it's delicious, trust me. Now into my favorite casserole dish, I'm adding our cottage pie filling and I'm topping that with mashed potatoes. So I made these mashed potatoes just like I did the first time in this video, exactly the same method. I'm just putting those right on top of the cottage pie filling. And then for that really homemade look, I went over it with a fork and gave it these little lines so there's some peaks and valleys in there. And then after it baked, it looked golden and delicious and bubbly, just like this. And I could really go for a slice of this. I'm hungry. So this made four portions, four very large portions. That's a full-size dinner plate. And as you can see, there is, again, no skimping on these portions. You've got the rich gravy in there and those toasty mashed potatoes on the top. And I, I really love this meal. Like I said, I make this pretty often. It's one of my favorites. It's super simple. It's comforting. And I don't even have a side with this. You just get a huge wedge of cottage pie and you feel happy and warm inside. And like everything is right in the world when you're eating this, I promise. Last but not least, we have dessert. We don't often have dessert in these challenges, so I was excited that I could work it in. And we're gonna be having our two pieces of turtle cheesecake from Aldi. I love turtle things. Chocolate turtles are one of my favorites and I also love cheesecake, so why not combine them? A quick note, if you wanted to save this couple of bucks that I spent on the cheesecake and buy something else, if you're not a dessert person and you want more food food throughout the week, forego the dessert and get something else. Because you could get a couple different things all day with two bucks. And you could really make your money and your meal stretch if you wanted to. Dessert is not a must, although it is fun and I enjoyed having it this week. Alright guys, that concludes my St. Patrick's Day themed meal plan budget challenge. I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun putting this one together and I really enjoyed trying new recipes and getting to test all these new foods. Like I said, everything you'll need to follow along is linked down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!